All right, hey, what's up guys? Gratuitous here from itsgratuitous.com. In this tutorial, I wanna walk you through how to master for beginners. I just have a one slide slideshow, and then we actually are gonna get into FL Studio, and we will just do a quick master with FL Studio stock plugins. And I just wanna walk you through what is mastering, what's all involved, what are the tools, and how to kind of get up and running with it, okay? So mastering is a different industry from mixing, and I just wanna walk that through with you in this quick tutorial okay so uh the basic core mastering tools when you're you know mastering for beginners so there's a limiter all right so a limiter is actually a compressor but it's just a really really aggressive compressor and it tames the peaks quite gently what it's doing is it's turning down the volume of the peaks whenever they go over that threshold to, pre to prevent distortion all right we also have a compressor which is just a gentle limiter and we're using a compressor to kind of like bring up like the body of the track in a nice transparent way so when you turn off and on that compressor you should just be hearing that the overall song just sounds more balanced and it's just a little bit louder all right the limiter is more like the peaks the compressor is more like the body all right and again that, that's just how i um, kind of look at, at uh, mastering we also have a multi-band compressor, which allows you to do tonal balance. So for example, you can create different bands. So for like the low lows, for like the mid lows, the mid highs and the highs, or even if you just want to do three bands, whatever, these can each compress differently and it can balance out your track in a nice transparent way. You can get more compression going on, get more loudness and uh, just a more balanced track. There is a clipper. Now, one thing I want to say about a clipper is you can be using a hard clipper or a soft clipper. I highly recommend getting a clipper that allows you to do a variable knee. So which means that you can go all the way to hard digital clipping or you can have a nice soft knee. And uh, a clipper is very, very special. It cuts off those peaks aggressively in a nice transparent way. So you can really push your master loud in a nice transparent way clippers are very very cool okay and when you get when you have a soft and hard clipper it allows you to really fine-tune your track and then you could be using eq to selective you know selective frequencies to fine-tune that mix but i am more talking that you've made the beat you've mixed it now you want to get into the mastering uh if someone sends you a beat you may be using these tools a little bit different because you have a different ear from how that person made the beat that they're sending it to you but if you've made the beat yourself and you've mixed it, well, you've kind of made it the way how you've made it. Mastering, we're just trying to bring up the overall loudness. We're just trying to get balance. Okay, so that's it for the slideshow. Let's get into the tutorial. Okay, so the first thing I want to say when it comes to mastering is it's all about controlling your peaks. All right, so we don't want distortion and we don't want pumping. That's pretty much the two main things that you want to be looking for when you're mastering your track. So in other words, you want to bring up the volume of the track. You want a nice balanced mix and master so that it just sounds nice and polished and loud and balanced no distortion no pumping and how we do that is with the tools right like limiters compressors clippers and those types of tools now you can see i have a bunch disabled so i just did a quick master as you can see i have not mixed this track none of these are into the mixer and that's one thing to say that you have to remember that when we are dealing with virtual instruments these are so like these are so high quality OK, when we are mixing the track, we are just kind of making things fit a little bit better. And I just did a quick master on this track just to give you an example that this track can sound really good by itself, just being mastered without being mixed. But I would go and actually mix it and just maybe fine tune some things. This is just a cool approach to do it this way, it kind of reveals the problems of the track and you can just kind of quickly uh, fix those. Um, but now if we are recording you record a voice, you record a guitar. When you're using EQ and compression, like many times you are fixing problems. Like maybe the person wasn't that close to the microphone. Maybe they played too loud. Maybe the room. There's a lot of variables when it comes to recording. But when we have virtual instruments, these are so high quality. And so many times when we're mixing and mastering, it's like we are over processing the already high quality signal. Okay, so what I did was I just highlighted um, a quieter section of the song and then the chorus and this is a really awesome way to master the track because you can instantly hear that when it goes to the chorus it's like ooh, maybe i pushed it too hard and then when it goes to the quiet part uh, you know a quieter part it's like well now it's not very loud and so this is going to allow you to uh, get that sweet spot by going from a loud to a quiet section so i just did a quick 
master and just listen to it as it is. And then we are gonna do it with some FL Studio stock plugins, okay? Again, this is not mixed. Right, so mastering is very, very gentle. bit of clipping going on. A little bit of EQ. All right, so let me just disable these and let me just talk a little bit more about mastering and what we're aiming for when we are mastering, okay? So the first thing is, let's just hit play and look at a meter, okay? So the first thing is, it's the peaks. The peaks are our enemies when it comes to mastering, okay? And when these peaks go over a threshold like this, do you hear how it's pumping? Right, so it sounds horrible. And so what's happening is it's the peaks. The peaks are getting in the way and our whole goal in mastering is to be able to control these peaks without pumping and without distortion. And the easiest way to do that is in the mixing stage when we, when we are working on our individual instruments, right? If we want to use compression and stuff like that on, let's say, our pianos, our drums, our claps. We are compressing all these individual instruments and we are taming these peaks on an individual level. What we're looking at right here, this is on the overall two bus, okay? So how it works is we mix our track, right? All our different instruments are, you know, so a piano, guitar, bass, kick, clap, right? So each instrument gets its own insert. And if you look here and you follow the cable, it's all going to the master, which is what we call the two bus, all right? So that's the left and the right speaker. You look here, it says the out one and out two. So that is the left speaker and the right speaker. Out one's the left, out two is the right. And so that is our two bus, that's our stereo mix. And all of our instruments get routed to there. So again, we can on the, so for example, this is the kick drum. You know, I applied some EQ on there. But now what happens is all these instruments get sent to the master. And this is where now, again, we are taming the peaks because the peaks is essentially the ceiling. All right. When it hits the ceiling, it the limiter is reducing the volume. And so if you are limiting too much or if you're compressing too much, you, you can really, really hear the duck in audio. OK, so it's actually like ducking. But what happens is the ducking happens so fast in a nice transparent way. And that's the whole goal of mastering is to tame these peaks uh, without distortion and without that pumping sound. And I'll just walk you through how I would approach it using uh, the fruity limiter. OK, so the fruity limiter is both a limiter and a compressor. One thing to mention before getting into mastering is, uh, first of all, this is a really complex topic, but I just want to break it down more simple so that let's say you made the beat, you want to kind of get it up to more of a commercial loudness just so you can listen to it like in your car. Now, when mastering, it's super, super important to have a loudness meter because the industry has changed in recent years uh, before people were pushing their master super, super loud. And what happens is these peaks, these are really, really essential to have like the life of your music. If you trim them off too hard with like a clipper, for example, you can actually clip these off very transparently. So in other words, you don't really hear the distortion, but what you do hear is like everything becomes louder. And then what would happen is if it came from the quiet part of the song into the loud part of the song, there's no real transition because the chorus should be louder, like just a little bit louder. It's more energetic. And then when it comes to like a verse or something like, like here, it should be just be a little bit quieter. And if you push it too hard, there's no transition there. OK, so in other words, it's just like everything's so loud. And then sometimes there's like pumping and it's just horrible. OK, so check out the Yulian loudness meter. He has a free and a paid version. Uh, personally, I just use the FabFilter Pro L2. You can see it has the loudness right there. And this uh, saves me from opening up an extra plugin. All right. Um, but again, this is free. And so what you're looking for when it comes to these streaming platforms is the integrated loudness. All right. 
Um, each streaming platform has a different number. And I'll tell you right now that this is kind of like an industry trend. I do see it changing eventually to be a more of a standard. But right now, it's moving in the right direction because, like I said, imagine like this, but even heavier, right? So, so they are pushing loudness super loud. So again, without getting too intense with it, because it's a super intense topic, and I just want to at least let you be aware of what's going on. So how it works is, first of all, typically you want to work with a gain plugin. And what that means is when we hit play here, okay, so I'll just hit play. And then we're going to open up a limiter, okay? So we will open up, let's just put limiter so we can easily see it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to send the gain into the limiter and we're just looking for how loud is this track, okay? And one other thing to say is on this limiter, we are now putting it at minus one. This is not like the industry trend. Back in the day, uh, it was like minus 0.1, all right? And then it changed to minus uh, 0.3 and then now it is minus one, okay? So again, without getting too intense, what happens is there's things called intersample peaks and that can be causing distortion when it comes to listening on your headphones and such a, and, st and stuff like that. And so we just reduce the volume so that if we are pushing our master a little hard, that if these intersample peaks do slip through, it's not going to overdrive the converters and all that kind of technical stuff. All right. So in other words, just put it to minus one and then we're going to look at our volume. OK, so let's hit play here. So it's hitting it a little bit. Again, this is the quiet part of the song. Okay, this is why I like to master like this. It's gonna hit that chorus and we're gonna see, can we push our master louder? And again, we're gonna get, open up our loudest meter. Okay, so you can see that we're hitting our limiter a little bit. It sounds pretty transparent. But let's push it a little bit harder just to show you how you can work with the pumping, okay? So, a little bit more. So again, when it, when it goes to the quiet part of the song, it's half decent, right? But let's let's go to um let's go to a loud part of the song. Okay, right there. All right, so right there, that's super audible, like the pumping, okay? I'll play that for you one more time. All right, so what we can do here is on our limiter, we can make it nice and fast, all right? It wasn't as audible. We'll pull back the sustain just a little bit. Okay, so you can see that I'm pushing this master quite hard and so maybe we'll pull back just a little bit and that will help and even even like you know 0.3 of a decibel will help pre prevent like that really really audible distortion okay so anyway so that's how you can send the gain into the limiter and you just kind of bring it up at that minus one and the whole goal here is again we don't want to hear distortion we don't want to hear pumping now the next thing in order to help tame those peaks okay you could use a, uh, a compressor you can see when i did it myself i used a compressor a multi-band compressor i used a clipper and a limiter and i just did a little bit on each of them and it just gave it just a more of an overall balanced sound transparently and you can get more loudness without super audible distortion so when it comes to the fruity limiter as a compressor um, i do find that this is quite a sensitive uh tool like uh, the actual fruity limiter i find like when i'm using like the the, the fab filter plugins i can kind of drive them a little bit more and a main reason for that let's go to the compressor the ceiling i'm going to put it all the way to the top and we're going to go compressor and so you can see in the ratio in the very, very top left, you can only go 1.1, okay? So you can't go in between there. For example, if I open up this plugin, you can see that we can actually go like 1.04, 1.02, 1.06. And this is really useful because it allows you to get more into the body, but I'm not gonna cover that. But what I am saying is, you. so when I hit play here, 
Um, we have to be a little bit more aggressive with this compressor. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm just going to make a much longer attack and I'm just going to use this just to bring up the body of the sound. And what that's going to do is hopefully we are going to be able to trim some of the peaks in the compressor because again, this is called your mastering chain. So we have our gain, which is sending into the compressor now, which is then sending into the limiter and the limiter is the final. So and then uh, the loudness meter is what we use to monitor. And the limiter is what now our audience would listen to when we if we were to export this track that would be it and so i'm just going to use a compressor to help tame these peaks a little bit so without the compressor on so you can see like these peaks so we can tame these peaks a little bit uh in the compressor so that's what i'm going to try and do here okay um let's enable that Fast release. Let's just be more aggressive just to really hear what's going on. All right, so I'm hearing a lot of pumping going on. We're gonna bring up the volume a little bit though. But you can see that our, our peaks aren't being hit as much. A little bit longer release. So if you go too fast of release of a release, you're gonna get heavy distortion. So I'll let you listen to that just so you can hear it. Okay, so you hear like the heavy distortion. When we go a, bit, a little bit of a longer release, it's gonna smooth it out for us. But we don't wanna to go too long because it kind of sucks the life out of the track. All right, so again, I am at 2.4 to 1 for mastering, which is quite heavy. So let's go like uh, maybe 1.4. Okay, let's maybe pull it back just a little bit for our loudness. We are going to open up the fruity limiter again, or I mean uh, the loudness meter. Let's just pull back a little bit. Right, so uh, hopefully that video helps. So essentially, if you just made the beat and you're wanting to get into mastering, uh, the first place to start is your first plugin should be like a gain plugin. And I just used uh, the Fruity Limiter. I just put the ceiling all the way to the top so that it's not hitting that ceiling. We're not getting pumping. We can just use volume. And then uh, we just send it into a limiter and we get to see how heavy are those peaks hitting the ceiling. And again, the ceiling's at minus one. That's the industry standard right now. You also want to have a loudness meter. Again, you can read more into what your loudness target is. Typically, this integrated loudness. Uh, some platforms like minus 14, some are minus 12. Um, so, you know, it all comes down to does your mix or does your master sound balanced? And is it, you know, do you hear distortion? Do you hear pumping? And essentially, um, People will enjoy your track for your track if it's a good track and if it sounds half decent. And uh, that's it. So if you guys got any questions, you guys can visit my website, it's gratuitous.com. Um, and if you guys want to start slow, you guys can also download my free book. Just go to it's gratuitous.com forward slash five keys. Download the free book. It's for FL Studio producers. Tons of valuable tips in there. And uh, leave a comment if you got questions. I'll talk to you in another video.